so moving on we will discuss the motivation for channel estimation so in wired communications the transmission media is a wire and the channel characteristics of a wire do not change rapidly or they remain more or less steady but in a wireless channel the channel is dynamic in nature and it produces fading and multipath effects um so the fading uh and multipath effects are caused because the transmitted signal undergoes a number of reflections diffractions and scattering on its way to the receiver so fading essentially means that the power of the transmitted signal reduces with distance and multipath propagation makes the transmitted symbol follow diverse paths and arrive at the receiver at different time instants with certain amount of delay from each other hence to accurately recover a transmitted symbol in a wireless environment a channel estimator is inevitable however channel estimator can be avoided if non coherent or differential modulation schemes like D dpsk are used but in dpsk an additional 3 to 4 db of power is required to achieve the same error performance as in a coherent modulation scheme so we will discuss the different types of fading and we shall discuss a few reasonable assumptions made in the case of ofdm which makes channel estimation a lot easier so as we had already discussed since in ofdm a large number of narrow band sub carriers are used the coherence bandwidth of the channel can be assumed to be much larger than the narrow band of the sub carrier and hence sub carrier can be assumed to undergo just flat fading and not frequency selective fading also if one assumes that the mobile does not move fast the doppler spread is less and the mobile uh, and the symbols undergo just um slow fading the coherence time of the channel is greater than one ofdm symbol because of which the channel can be assumed to be constant for one ofdm symbol and more so this diagram shows where a channel estimator fits in at the receiver so as we can see in an ofdm receiver um you have the fast fourier transform block which transforms symbols from the time domain into the separate sub carrier frequencies and the channel estimator gets inputs from the the di different sub carriers and then it estimates the attenuations or the gains at these frequencies of the sub carriers and the output of channel estimator is fed back to equalizer which nullifies the effects of the channel and tries to recover the original transmitted signal so channel estimation is mostly done in the presence of a pilot symbol a pilot symbol is a predetermined a uh, sequence of symbols which the receiver has prior information about so so in this slide we discuss a uh, three separate pilot configurations so the three separate blocks here correspond to the time frequency resource grid and the one on the left you can see that the the squares which are dark or black are the pilot symbols and the other squares correspond to the data symbols the actual data that is being transmitted so in the leftmost figure we can see that the pilot symbol occupies the first ofdm symbol of all the sub carriers whereas in the second symbol the second configuration we can see that the pilot symbol occupies a few particular sub carriers but across all the symbols and in third configuration we can see that the pilot symbols are scattered in the time and frequency grid so the challenge here is to 
increase the number of pilot symbols because it gives you a better estimate of the channel but at the same time if you increase the number of pilot symbols then the actual transmitted data rate reduces so it is a trade-off where you need to fix the number of pilot symbols and the positions of pilot symbols so, so that you can get an accurate estimate as much as possible so talking about channel model uh, an additive white Gaussian channel or an AWGN channel is a memoryless channel and it has just one impulse at zero it is characterized by one impulse at zero but all cha all wireless channels are not AWGN channels because of which a channel impulse response can be thought of as a train of impulses as shown in the equation 1 where G tau is the channel impulse response alpha m are the coefficients channel coefficients Ts is the sampling time tau m is the maximum delay spread of the channel and L is the length of channel prefix and cyclic prefix is fixed in such a way that L is greater than tau m the maximum delay spread of the channel so if xk is the vector as the transmitted symbol at kth subcarrier and hk is the channel attenuation at kth subcarrier then the received symbol for the kth subcarrier yk at the receiver would look like equation 2 and nk is the complex Gaussian noise that is added at the kth subcarrier so from this expression we can find that the channel attenuation for the kth subcarrier is given by g of k over n ts where g is the frequency response of the channel with impulse response g of tau now we will discuss one of the simplest and most straightforward estimation methods called the least squares estimation or ls estimation the channel estimation the channel attenuation equation which was given in the previous slide if it is written in a matrix form looks like this so here y is the received vector at the receiver x is a square matrix with a diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements um, the as the uh, as the transmitted data vectors h is a vector of channel attenuations for different subcarriers and n is the noise vector so in least squares estimation technique the objective is to minimize the error as much as possible the the objective function is the second norm of um, y minus x times h cap where h cap is the estimate so by taking the derivative of this expression and equating it to zero we can easily derive the expression for h of ls which is the least square estimate of the channel is given by x inverse of y and the x inverse of y um, as x is a square matrix it would be of this the vector would be of this form where you have y0 over n x0 y1 over x1 etc yn minus 1 over xn minus 1 so as we can see it is quite straightforward to find the channel attenuation, attenuation vector because you just need to take the ratios of the gains for each of the subcarriers so it is computationally very simple but the drawback of least squares estimation is that least squares estimation does not take the correlation properties that we discussed earlier into the account so the most common strategy is linear minimum mean square estimation or LMMSE the objective function in this case is to minimize h minus h cap square the expected value of h minus h cap square for all possible values of linear estimates h cap and h l m m s c is given by a times of h of the h l s and in turn a is given by this equation where r h h corresponds to the autocorrelation matrix of channel attenuations of subcarriers r h h l s is the cross correlation matrix between the 
channel attenuation and the least square estimates and R HLS HLS is the autocorrelation matrix of the least square channel estimates so as can be observed from the previous slide um, computation of the least squares the minimum mean square estimate is not that simple because it involves the computation of the inverse of channel correlation matrices which uh, increases in proportion to the number of subcarriers used n the other assumption here in LMMSC is that um, the statistical properties of the channel is assumed to be known which basically gives you the correlation matrix but it gives a better performance compared to least squares but it is of little practical value because of the computational complexity involved as a result research has been done in finding low complexity approximations of LMMSE which are close to the optimal LMMSE values so in this project uh, the simulations were performed on a sim an LTE simulator which was developed by Vienna University of Technology it is an open source MATLAB based LTE physical layer simulator and the essential components in the simulator are the simulator could implement one base station or a single cell it could implement up to n receiver user equipments it simulated a downlink shared channel and it could implement various modulation schemes like QPSK, 16QAM and 64QAM which are used in LTE so let's talk about the downlink reference signal in LTE downlink reference signal as we discussed earlier is the pilot symbol which is used in LTE so the cell specific reference signal is used for channel estimation so as you can see from this time frequency resource grid there are two symbols R0 and R1 in each slot or in each slot which are used for pilot symbols the remaining five symbols are the data symbols the reference signal or the pilot symbol is picked from 504 pseudo random sequences based on cell ID OFDM symbol and slot number so the receiver has prior information of these reference signals and utilizes these reference symbols to interpolate the channel attenuation gains for different subcarriers and different times we 